Um, and I'm going to talk about a project that uh, I worked on with a client of ours called Spherical Studio about, um, well, I'm going to talk mostly about the base map work that we did, but there's more work to this project. And they have a tool where they're um, helping people run workshops to envision a, a more sustainable um, and resilient Los Angeles. So that is the focus of, of the tool itself. Um, about Spherical, so Spherical is a strategic design and integrative research studio um, working to, like I said, regenerate the health and integrity of Earth's living systems. They're based in California, I think in the East Bay, but a lot of them live in Southern California. Um, and you can see some things that they focus on here. Um, this is all like information on their website if you want to know more about Spherical. The tool that we worked on is called the Living Infrastructure Field Kit. And so what I was describing in the beginning is essentially what this tool does. There are a couple of different components to it. Uh, the first is the primer. So it's a, a video that users can start with to kind of get a sense of, okay, what are the problems that we're tackling with this tool? Like, why do I need to interact with this base map to understand um, how to improve my community and uh, it explains a little bit of like what are the options and how could you uh, use the visioning tool which is the the second part listed here um, and we're going to look at that in a lot more depth in just a second so when we started working with spherical this was earlier this year i think maybe in march or april um, they had built a custom satellite base map in-house, and I should say everything here I'm going to talk about is built in Mapbox Studio, what they came to us with and what we worked on. Um, so no change in, in the render or the technology really at all, which is really nice for them and for us. We use Mapbox a lot, or MapLibre as well at Stamen. That's pretty, pretty common, and as Katie said, I worked at Mapbox before Stamen, so that's right in my wheelhouse. Um, this is the type of stuff I like to work on. Um, but the satellite map, as you can see here, this is the, the prior version, which I'll show in more detail in a second, did some things really well. Um, it was a imagery, like satellite base map, like I said, with some vector data on top. Um, it focused on natural features and had some custom label hierarchy for places in the LA area, so mostly LA County, not just the city itself. Um, some things that it could have done better, well, first they, they wanted to curate the experience a little more for the user, and so they wanted a vector-based map that had no imagery at all. So that was like the big challenge here for us. Um, we also wanted the look and feel to be a little more optimistic, a little more hopeful. This map is a little dark, and it's not, it's not inspiring me to want to change my community. Um, I should say watersheds, if I go to the next slide, um, were one of the most important features, and, and water is a really big part of the story they're trying to tell, so that is a pretty prominent part of the map. Um, this map also is in 2D and 3D, or a pitched view, which in Mapbox is just, you know, you pitch the map a little bit, um, like 45 degrees to take a look at it. Um, and in LA, that's really nice see, because you have the mountains there in the distance. So that was something else we wanted to improve on. Um, and then you could add data layers on top to understand how different demographics and other things would impact different parts of LA County. So here you'll see this is what it looked like before. There's no data on the map yet. But if you add one of the data layers, like here it's ozone, it's mostly choropleth data. Hope it got choropleth in the, oh, I guess I don't have the captions, so uh, not an issue here. But yeah, the color palettes that are, are used here, as you can see, if we go back to the what they had originally, are, again, not the most optimistic and don't really reflect the brand that Spherical has like in the rest of their tooling. Um, you saw the, the screenshots from the website earlier, and it doesn't really look like this. So that's a lot of things that we wanted to do. But boiling that down into design goals, we had the vector base map. That is the first and foremost, most important thing that we wanted to do. Uh, making sure like community and uh, environment are the focuses of that. 
capturing LA was really important. We wanted to make it feel like what people think LA is or what, especially because people using it are people who live in the Los Angeles area and they should feel like this is a map of a place that they know and make it feel more like the overall experience on not only Spherical's website and in the visioning tool, but just uh, with the rest of the, the pieces that are in the, the user interface here, which also is gonna get some changes, but we don't have really any screenshots of that yet, unfortunately, because it's still under construction. So this is very much work in progress. Okay, so set the stage a little bit, uh, and now we have to start actually doing all of those things I just said. So um, the design process for me was first talking to Spherical and understanding what they wanted to do with their map and what's important to them. They're not cartographers, they have a base map, but they, just a designer on their team who does general design designed it, and so they, they don't think about maps necessarily in the same way that we do. So you might not be able to read some of these sticky notes, but if you can, um, we ask them to think about how they want the map to look and feel so we can take that and rank them in order because as we know, maps are, there's a lot of compromise when you're designing and some things are more important than others and you have to make those decisions and, and kind of go with it from there. I know what's important to me when I design a map, but that's not necessarily what was important to them. And so then we took all of these things and then I translated them into what does that actually mean cartographically, like how do I make the map feel more approachable? Because it's not obvious, I think. It, it maybe is to me, but not to them. Like what does that mean exactly? And in this case, for example, um, we wanted the color palette to be warmer um, and we wanted the fonts to be not intimidating. They needed to be light and airy. Um, like I said, they have uh, some brand guidelines and as you saw, the overall website looks a bit different than some of the earlier screenshots that have the older map. So they have this really nice color palette that is sampled from different vegetation and landscapes in California. It's really bright and interesting. And so in addition to designing a new base map, we also worked on those data layers and making them pop and making the data the story. Um, so some of those colors end up um, in the data layers. So they'll go on top of the base map. But some of these colors also are gonna be in the base map that we ended up working on for them. So finding the right balance of, okay, we have a handful of colors here, but we can't, we don't want things to compete with each other too much, but we want the brand to feel cohesive. Um, this next slide is like one of my favorite things I've ever encountered working on a client project. So um, they have an, an illustrator who draws these little icons that are, um, like stickers that you are in the tool where you can like place a sticker on a certain location and it's related to like a prompt about that place as part of a workshop that you might run. So they run these workshops for people to, to think through these problems and think about how to um, you know address them in their community and how they, they might do that. So yeah, these stickers are available and then someone on their team sketched this interesting like oblique landscape of LA with the mountains so prominent and the the colors are very nice and bright and work really well with that color palette that I showed um, on the last slide. So I, this felt like a really nice place to start. Um, so we took this and plus some other quotes from the client that I feel like were, were really meaningful to me. They said they wanted it to be a web map that feels like a print map and so it didn't want to feel too digital or too um, like something you would see on a screen. They want it to be like light and airy, like I said before, and fun, and, but not too fun. So finding the balance, uh, you know how it is. Lots of, lots of uh, hierarchy to play with and things to try to, to compromise to get to the right, um, the right product. So this is the first version. Um, it's funny to look at it now, but this was sort of designed like the color palette more or less drawn from this illustrated map, um, but not quite so bright because it's gonna have data on top of it. Um, so this uses the brand fonts that they have, and I don't typically, well, I wouldn't typically think to use a serif font in this way, but that's was something that they wanted. This is part of like the approachability 
thing we talked about earlier, and so that was an interesting challenge for me. This font is ITC Clearface, in, in case anyone was wondering. Um, and they also have a sans serif, so we tried some like mixing to help add hierarchy in LA because there's so many place labels. Um, and it's not like as simple, I think, as some other cities where neighborhoods and minor and major place labels are, um, are easy to distinguish from each other. There, there's a lot more conflict. Um, like I said, the app, this is built in Mapbox Studio, so it's using Mapbox's data, so Mapbox streets, the, those tile sets. Um, you can see the 3D terrain, and I'm sure people are noticing the sky and the fog in the background, which I, again, I worked at Mapbox, so I don't really think about those things, because they are on all of their maps, like by default, if you pitch them, but I guess this is different than some other maps um, and some other tools that are out there, so picking a color for the sky and adding this fog um, to transition between land and sky. This was a good first attempt, but um, fog is confusing with smog. LA is very smoggy. Uh, the mountains looked a little dull. This, I think the word that the client used was dusty. <laughs> you don't want your mountains to be dusty, so had to think about that a little bit. Um, and it felt a little lifeless, like we want it to be more optimistic, and this is not feeling that way right now. Um, the hierarchy is not quite right for LA. Like some of the uh, folks on Spherical's team live in LA, and they were like, this doesn't make sense to us because we're just using what came in Mapbox Streets, and so we had to make some adjustments for LA. And then the, uh, the all caps and the serif font with the bold weight is, is definitely too strong and not approachable like we want it to be. And the water also is not quite like popping enough off the map. Like I said earlier, that's one of the bigger um, things that they like to focus on, so we need to be able to see rivers a little better than we are here. This is like version 1.5, so took into consideration some of that feedback. It's greener. Um, the, the mountains are, are more lush, but they're still not, you know, popping, so we, like, we got to work on that and make it a little better. Um, again, like, the label hierarchy is still not right, so lots of tweaking to get it there. And then uh, the scrub out beyond the mountains looks too green. I think in LA you would think of that as being like, it's not a desert, but it's deserty. So <laughs> we're trying to get it a little less green and a little bit more, more dusty, not like the mountains. We don't want those to be dusty. Um, so this is the final version that we came up with. Uh, I sat down with the designer and we like went through and really talked through a lot of the, the challenges that I've talked about so far. Um, and we got, brought the color palette and made it so much brighter. Um, we made the, the city itself not feel so gray, but a little bit more like, okay, there's not as much green here right now, and that's okay. But it doesn't contrast quite so harshly with uh, the other parts of the map. I don't think you can see it here on this screen. Maybe you can. There's a pattern in the water because it's the ocean and there are little, there are little waves. So trying to add some texture to make it feel a little less digital and a little more uh, bespoke. And then the other, the hills are alive. You know, we finally got like that green right in the mountains. So I feel good about that. And we've got like that nice, like delicate place label balance that I was looking for. Took a while to get there, but really happy with how it came out. Uh, one thing I haven't talked about is when you zoom into the map, you have, we have this really nice custom land cover data um, that they worked on tiling. I don't really understand that part of the, of the stack, but if you can see here, all of this, these green, uh, these are not dots, these are pixels because it's um, like gridded, it's not raster data, but it's like gridded vector data, so we can style each pixel in the grid differently. Um, so this is like tree canopy, basically. So we wanted to make sure that it didn't look like this ur really urban part of LA had no trees at all because that's not the case, but we don't want to use imagery. So we found like a really nice balance between those. And then it only included like community points of interest because that's what matters for the projects that, we're, um, that they're focused on. 
So seeing the first and the last drafts next to each other, I feel like is, is really striking and there's a big difference. I feel like all of those things maybe sound small separately, but together there's a lot going on here. Um, and I'm, yeah, like I said, really happy with how it came out. And then uh, just to summarize, besides the base map, we, I already mentioned the data layers, but we did some work with that to make them look nicer, use nicer colors, um, and other, other things you can do, like not just choropleth. So we have some other options there as well. Um, you can aggregate to a choropleth or see the data sometimes in other formats. Um, and we also developed a, a new version of the satellite base map in parallel with the vector base map that used some of the same styling. Um, and that's it. If you want to read more about this, there's a blog post, uh, stamen.com slash blog, but we do lots of base map designs. So if this type of thing is something you're looking for, please let me or, or Ross, my, my colleague here, raise your hand, Ross. No, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, let us know and uh, we would love to do something like this for you. Thank you.